Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and made our way through the number 4 door, ran our way down a hallway, and found ourselves in the second class cabins. Right now we're in room 92 with June, and in room 93 are Santa and Lotus. Without further ado, let's begin our second escape room. Alright, so there's a few things that I want to mention first before I quickly get into this. First of all, I forgot to mention this in the previous episodes for some reason, but the reason that I waited like a year to actually get around to doing this Let's Play is because I wanted to do it for Let's Play number 18 for a very specific reason. The digital root of 18 is 9. 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. So you can kind of see why I'd want to do that. Second of all, this game has a lot of extra dialogue for interacting with stuff. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it all. So if you have a favorite interaction or favorite thing that you want to be examined, uh, then let me know in the comments below. We will most likely return to a bunch of these escape rooms. So I'll be sure to check the comments and see if there's anyone who has any dialogue that they want me to go back and see so that when we go to that room again, then we can get the funny dialogue. Anyways, now it's time to actually start solving the puzzle. First is this uh, book of matches right here. Uh, it's a box of matches. There are matches inside, obviously. Hey, do you think we could burn down that door at the end of the hallway with these matches? Not gonna work, huh? Yeah. They're matches. You could probably light something small on fire with them. Junpei looked down blankly at what he was holding, then up at June. Oh yeah, how's your fever? You feeling better now? Yes, I'm feeling fine. June certainly looked fine. Junpei held his hand on her forehead for a few seconds. It seemed her fever really had gone down. Are you worried about me? Hey, come on, it's not like that. Junpei did his best to act as though he didn't care. His best wasn't very good. <laughs> I guess you haven't changed at all, Jumpy. She giggled. By the way, Jumpy? Hmm? How did you end up here? What do you mean? I told you earlier, didn't I? There was a man with a gas mask when you got home at night. You inhaled some white smoke and passed out. When you woke up, you were on D-deck. Yeah, that's it. But is that really the truth? What? Jumpy, are you hiding something from me? No! Why would I? Well, if you think about it, this is awfully suspicious. I mean, why would two childhood friends bump into each other in a place like this? Hey, I could ask you the same thing. Are you hiding something? What would I hide? Well, I don't know. Anything. I mean, you're the one hiding it. How would I know? You mean, like, the number of men I've dated? Junpei's heart stumbled over itself. Do you want to know? He had to admit he was a little curious. Don't worry. She smiled at him. Only 18. Huh? Time zero. Yeah, I guess I just haven't met Mr. Wright yet. Yeah, that's in a different DS game. And June looked a little embarrassed and scratched the back of her head in a desperate attempt to seem nonchalant. Junpei coughed quietly in much the same way. Anyway, I'm not hiding anything. Just like you, Jumpy. When I woke up, I was on D-Deck. Well, you do have a point. I mean, why did Zero pick us? We haven't seen each other since elementary school. June nodded, and for a few moments she, she had the faraway look of someone deep in thought. Look for what connects the victims. That will lead you to the culprit. Do you remember Seven saying something like that? Yeah, I do. So? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think this must have all had something to do with a classmate of ours. You got any ideas who it might be? No, nothing. No. Oh. Well, if it had something to do with the school, then it, could, then it could be any one of our teachers, or maybe the principal. Or the janitor or the lunch lady? No, I can barely remember any of them. Yeah, I know. Junpei went back to searching, feeling unpleasant and, and confused. Elementary school. Elementary school. Was there anything strange that had happened in elementary school? As he searched the room, he continued to rack his brain. 
I always love these uh, types of conversations that you get in the middle of the escape rooms. Uh, we're about to have one right now. This isn't a painting. Is it a map? It looks like a map of the ship's interior. Oh, this is a great find. I think it'll be really useful. Let's take it with us. It is now, it is now possible to use the map screen. Map screen. The map screen can only be viewed during the story sections. It is entirely different in function from the bird's eye view mode. While on the map screen, you can examine a map of the ship's floor plan, which you will acquire over the course of the story. Touch down menu to open the menu. If you touch map while in the menu, you will be taken in the, to the map screen. While you are there, you can scroll around the floor plan with the control pad or the stylus. Touching the green parts of the floor plan will allow you to see a bird's eye view for that room. Junpei took one last look at the map, then folded it up and slid it back into his pocket. Jun looked up as he closed it. The ship is bigger than I thought. Yeah, it's probably around 900 feet long. It must be one of those fancy cruise ships. Of course, it doesn't really look like a cruise ship. Everything in here is really retro. Even if it's some sort of style choice, there's just too much. Do you remember what Zero said? On April 14th, 1912, the famous ocean liner Titanic crashed into an iceberg. After remaining afloat for two hours and forty minutes, it sank beneath the waters of the North Atlantic. Do you think that maybe this boat and the Titanic have something to do with each other? Hmm, that's a good point. I doubt he would have mentioned it if there wasn't a reason. Junpei took a moment to look around the room. Do you think this boat is... a replica of the Titanic? A replica? Yeah, you know, like a copy of the actual boat. Who on earth would make something like that? Fans. Crazy Titanic fans. No way! Do you even know how much money that would take? No idea. But all they've got to do is break even, you know? Break even? Yeah. They could use it as a cruise ship. Climb aboard a piece of history, sail around the world in the, resurrect in the resurrected Titanic. Hell, with marketing like that, they'd probably have more customers than they'd know what to do with. Do you really think people would want to ride on a ship with such an ominous past? It's the site of the worst accident in history. Over 1,500 people died. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd get cursed just for going. A curse, huh? Jumpy, do you believe in that sort of thing? You know, curses and stuff? Nah, they're a load of crap. Sorry, but I can't really say I believe in that kind of stuff. Tact was not one of Junpei's many better qualities. <laughs> what about you? Nah, I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Yes, I do believe in curses. In fact, I think it was a curse that sunk the Titanic. What? A curse sank the Titanic. The curse of the Egyptian mummy. Junpei couldn't understand how Jun had maintained a straight face to say that. Supposedly, the Titanic carried the mummy of the, pri of the priestess Amon-Ra, which was stolen from a pyramid. And they say that the mummy had a history. Everyone involved with it died mysterious deaths. Come on, I'm sure you've heard of it before. Those who open the coffin will forever be cursed. Haven't you ever heard of that one? So you're saying the Titanic sunk because of that curse. That's right. June's eyes had lit up with excitement like a child with a new toy. <laughs> That's stupid. I don't buy it. It's true. How can you be so sure? That mummy wasn't just a normal mummy. It was really mysterious. Totally unbelievable. What's so unbelievable about it? Well, supposedly she was really pretty. Pretty? Yes, but she was a mummy. That's right. She wasn't all shriveled up or rotten or anything. She looked just like she was alive. Oh, I get it. It's that thing, I don't remember the name, uh, where your body turns into some kind of wax. If a dead body is put in the right sort of environment, the fat in it turns into something kind of like candle wax, right? And, uh, yes, saponification, but that's not what it was. Huh? That's not it. She wasn't wax. And then what? what is it? They say that she was frozen. What? Frozen? That's right. The whole body was frozen solid. You know how a human body is more than 60% water? Well, all of that water was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic, 
and even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. Jun and Junpei talked a little more and then went back to their investigation, but even as they did, his mind went back to what she'd told him. Ice that wouldn't, even, that wouldn't melt even in the desert. Could such a thing really exist? No, even if it did, it wouldn't really be ice anymore, would it? The more he thought about it, the more his head hurt, like he'd eaten his ice cream too fast. So, yeah, let this be an introduction, because there's some, like, insanely wacky stuff that goes on in these games. So, be prepared for that. Anyways, we got a key! A key! Do you think it's the key to the dresser? It's a key we found in the dresser. Maybe I can use it on another similar dresser. So with all the stuff we've gotten in these rooms, we're gonna go ahead and head back outside to the main room, and if we click on this door, Jumpy, where are you going? Um, I was thinking of going over to Lotus's room. Why? What do you mean, why? I'm just gonna go check up on him. Is there something wrong with that? Well, no. Come back soon? Sure thing. I'll leave the rest to you. Sure. Leave it to me. Alright, off to the other room. And we can head on over to the other room. And you'll notice one thing very quickly, is that it's pretty much the same thing, just uh, mirrored. We have the weird painting thing that I've neglected to mention, this vase, and we head out on here, and this is right where the, uh, where the Book of Matches was, but instead, we have a candle. A candle with a candlestick. This might come in handy. It's a candle, Junpei. It's on an iron candlestick. I know what a candle is, Lotus. It's a pretty big candle. If we light it, it'll probably get really bright. Candle on a candlestick. We light this, it'll give us some uh, light. So we get to combine things again. Combine the matches with the candlestick. I know. If we use these matches to light the candle. So you lit the candle. I'm sure it'll be a light in dark places when all the other lights go out. Lit candle. I can feel the heat it's putting out. Actually, it's pretty hot. I'd kind of like to set it down. Lit candle. It's hot and I don't want to hold it anymore. So now that we back out, this area right over here is pretty dark. Uh, awesome! With the light of this candle, maybe we can take a look around over there. But it gets so hot when I hold it. I want to put it down. Well, why don't you set it on top of the dresser? It's flat there. At least it won't fall over. Oh, right. Good idea. Now everything's lit up. Hey, got pretty bright. Now we can look around a little. Instead of looking around a little though, I want to go ahead and, uh, let's see. I want to pull out the dresser key because Junpei mentioned earlier that it might open something similar to the dresser in the previous room. Let's see if this, yes! Yes, it worked! Open it up and we got this weird plate right here. That's a strange design. Is it ceramic? It doesn't look like there are any puzzles in it. A tile with a black and white pattern on it. So this might look a little bit familiar to something from earlier. Anyways, we want to make our way over to the other side of the room. And in this bed right here, we have a curtain. A curtain, huh? Well, it's got all these metal rings, probably so you can hang it from something, you know? Yes, but it doesn't look like a normal curtain. The way it feels, I think it's probably waterproof, which would make this a shower curtain. A uh, shower curtain, huh? It's a folded up shower curtain. Damn, that thing's big if you open it up. Oh, there's a hole, like a bug ate through it or something. Oh, you're right. Think maybe it was a peeping Tom? I bet Lotus would make sure the perv hurt. If I catch him, you won't hear a peep out of that jerk. I'll knock him into Tom Morrow. Get it? That's Tom much. <laughs> it's a shower curtain. The jury's still out on whether or not it was the work of a pervert, but there's a hole in it. There's, it's a shower curtain. There's a hole in it. Alright, so... Oh, huh? Hey, what the hell? It just got dark all of a sudden. Maybe the candle got blown out. We should go see. We head on over to the candle, and look here! There's a candlestick covered in melted wax on top of the dresser. Hey, what's this? The top of the candlestick looks kind of weird. You're right, it's all bumpy. The part of the candlestick where the candle goes looks like a key. 
a key, huh? I think I ran into a lock I couldn't open earlier. Part of the candlestick is a key, apparently. Guess I'd better try and find the lock it goes to. So, we didn't uh, investigate this earlier, but right here is a cabinet. Well, this is a display case, or a display case, excuse me. Check it out, these plates and shit look really expensive. You wanna take a look? So we use the key. Let's see if the candlestick key will do anything. Yes! It opened! Alright, put pull that shit open! And there we go, we got another piece similar to the first one. Hey, don't you think the pattern on that tile looks like something? Yeah, I think I saw it somewhere. Maybe we need to put that tile in the frame. Maybe. It's a tile with a black and white pattern on it. I think I'm supposed to insert it insert it somewhere. Hey, Junpei, you got a minute? Santa had shown up out of nowhere and gave Junpei no small start. Here, take this. Santa pulled something out of his pocket. It looked like a bookmark and a four-leaf clover on it. What's this? I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sure it ain't gonna be any help to us, but uh, I figured you might as well hang on to it anyway. Then why don't you hold on to it? Santa gave him a wry smile. You know what I hate most in the world? I got four things. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Hope, faith, love, and luck? Damn straight. You hate these things? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Uh, not really, but... Junpei tried to figure out how best to phrase what he wanted to say. What does a bookmark have anything to do with any of that? Santa scratched the back of his ear and looked awkward. Well, see, each leaf on the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, okay? And that meaning is pretty much those four words. It's like a flower language. Well, I guess it's not a flower, is it? So, a leaf language, I guess. Yeah, you could call them leaf words. Leaf words. Junpei looked at the bookmark. Hope, faith, love, and luck. So, yeah, I want you to take it, okay? Just touching it gives me the creeps. Take the damn thing, alright? Santa pretended to shiver with disgust and shoved the bookmark into Junpei's confused hands. Junpei, what do you want to do? So, I'm gonna go ahead and not take this. And remember, we're gonna... I'm gonna show off pretty much everything in this game, so I'll show off uh, later when it make, makes the most sense. I'll be sure to show off what happens if you do take the bookmark. So, for now, I'm not gonna take it. Thanks, but no thanks. It's kind of weird to be getting presents from another dude, you know? Santa's eyebrows went up. Apparently, he hadn't thought of that. Well, hmm. I guess you do have a point. I won't force it on you. Sure you don't want it? I don't want it. Yeah, I don't want it. Why don't you give it to Lotus? Ah, uh, good idea. Will do. Santa turned and headed off to the other room. Hey, you old bag! I just found the perfect thing for a, wo for a woman in her 40s. He walked into the next room, waving the bookmark. Junpei turned back to his work. And heard a faint sound from the other room. The sound of bones breaking. I'm just gonna pretend I didn't hear that. Junpei returned to his search with renewed vigor. So we get a pretty comedic scene if we don't actually hand that over. Now, the shower curtain, if we head over here, there's an extra door that leads to the bathroom. And uh, right here we have an area that's perfect for hanging up a shower curtain. And there's a curtain rod running along the ceiling. Let's put that shower curtain on those hooks. So if we go ahead and turn around, we can go ahead and pull this curtain. Let's try spreading the curtain. And right in here, we see something interesting. There's a hole in the curtain. If I look at it from a ways back, I can see a single tile. Oh, right from here I see what the tile is. Looks like it's fifth from the top, third from the right. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head back over to the other room. What's up? You're going back already? Well, I can't just leave June there by herself. <laughs> what, you think you're a knight or her protector or something? You're creeping me out. Whatever, man. I'm going. Uh, and you'll remember that, uh, 
most of these puzzles are based around uh, finding one thing in one room and then the solution to that thing being in the other room. We found the matches in one room and the candlestick in the other. We found the key in one room and the locked dresser in the other. And uh, if we go ahead and apply that same logic here, uh, fifth from the top, third from the right, here it is. Yes, this one's loose. I think I can get under this with my nails and yes. So, funny story, actually. Uh, let me just see if there's dialogue. Who would have thought this would be hidden in the bathroom, huh? You did a good job finding it. So, one side is a design like the rest of the bathroom tiles, and the other side is a black and white design. I think I've seen that pattern somewhere before. And this is the tile I pulled off of the bathroom wall. Looks like one of the one of the bathroom tiles. I think that's supposed to say bathroom tile, but it says bathroom titles. Whoops. On one side, and it has black and white pattern on the other side. All right, so now we have three t three whole tiles. Uh, yeah. Why don't we go back to the living room? Okay, let's go back. So funny story, I was clicking on that bathroom wall to investigate, and like just out of pure luck and random chance, I just so happened to click on the correct tile, and I just got it out of nowhere, and I had no idea that that wasn't how I was supposed to solve the puzzle. Like, I thought the dialogue was a little weird, on how Junpei suddenly knew where the tile, like, which tile to pull on, but I was like, I didn't really think about it too much. And then going back through and playing through the game, I was like, oh, wait, that's... I did something too early. I do think it's really cool how you can, like, solve the puzzle early, so that if you're replaying through, you can just grab everything and go. The exit. Lotus and Santa are in the room on the other side. I'm gonna go check up on them. So now we have three tiles, and we need three tiles to finish this uh, picture right here. And there's a tile in the frame, so I guess I'm supposed to put tiles in the empty spaces. Alright, I'm gonna give it a shot. So to go ahead and solve this, go ahead and swap top right and bottom right, and then swap top right and top left. Then you just need to turn them, turn top right once, and then turn top left twice. And there you go, that's the solution. Yes! I did it! There, picture complete. And there goes the frame. Ooh, what's this? What do you mean, what's this? Pretty obvious, isn't it? It's a hole in the wall. Like a hidden safe or something, you know? Anyway, let's take a look. I think there's something inside. Let's go ahead and grab it. It's the Mars key. Whoa, this is one of those Mars symbols. The door at the end of the hallway. It's the same symbol engraved on the keyhole. Then that's gotta mean... Yes, we can use this key to get through that door. Junpei messed around a bit with the key he had and looked blankly at the picture that slid down. What's the deal with this picture, anyway? Santa had only been mumbling to himself, but it drew Lotus's attention. She looked at the picture and paused. I... I think I've seen this picture before. Where? In a book. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. I saw this picture in his book. What's this interesting theory? Morphogenetic field, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Man, I can't deal with this. Just listening to you talk about it is giving me a headache. Santa put his hands on his head as though he were in great pain. Lotus merely arched an eyebrow in his direction and continued. It's not a difficult concept to grasp. In essence, he states that the shapes of living organisms and their behavioral patterns are transmitted through a field not visible to the eye. Uh, what part of that isn't difficult exactly? Lotus did not look pleased. Alright, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Telepathy? Yes, telepathy. Well, perhaps not exactly telepathy, but it is close enough for a simple approximation. Santa suddenly burst into laughter. <laughs> are you serious? Telepathy? Who do you think we are? Kids from the 70s? I can't believe someone would actually do serious research about something like that. Yes, I agree. Lotus's response was surprisingly curt. Junpei had expected at least some conflict. I read the book, but I can hardly say I understood it. I'm in no position to defend or condemn anything it said. It was probably just someone latching onto a statistical outlier from some study and turning it into a ridiculous theory. 
there's no scientific merit to any of it, I'm sure. But even so, I... Anyway, I saw a picture like that one in his book. Well, it just indicated the picture they'd all been looking at. After a moment, she walked up to the strange picture, examined it, and then spoke. Hey, what do you think this picture looks like? Santa answered first. What do you mean? Isn't it just, like, abstract or something like that? It's just black and white scribbles. There's no meaning there. That's it. What about you, Junpei? Does it look like anything to you? Hmm. I guess it looks like... The options we have are a man's face, butterfly, a koi, a dog, a small boat floating in a lake, or a funya rinpa. A funya rinpa? See? I mean, this totally looks like one. Here and... And here... Junpei indicated parts of the picture that looked exactly like the other parts. After three seconds of silence, Lotus looked at Junpei. What the hell is a Funyarinpa? What do you mean, what the hell is a Funyarinpa? You mean, uh, you don't know? How the hell would I know? How could you not know? It's, that's practically blasphemous. Say you're sorry. Apologize to the Funyarinpa. Goodness, you're such a rude woman. Another three seconds of awkward silence went by. Lotus opened her mouth as she shook. Junpei, are you just screwing around? Forget it. I'm just gonna tell you. This is a dog. See? Like this. Lotus pointed out parts of the picture, and eventually a dog took shape in them. It looked as though she had a point. It was a dog. Santa also nodded in agreement. So, now we know what it's a picture of, but I don't see how that helps us. Lotus nodded and began to speak. A TV show from Great Britain did an experiment once. They took two similar pictures. Both of them were difficult to identify, initially. But once you figured out the answer, you couldn't see it as anything else. The first picture was a woman wearing a hat. The other one, well, to make it easier, Let's just say it was a picture of a dog. So, their experiment... First they sent the pictures to other parts of the world where British radio and television didn't reach. To Ireland, the US, Africa, Europe, etc. Then in each country they gathered a number of test subjects. All in all, there were roughly 1,000 people. Those 1,000 people were shown the two pictures and asked, What does this picture look like to you? The results, in and of themselves, were not terribly interesting. 9.2% of the people saw the lady in the picture. 3.9% saw the dog in the dog picture. Then, two days later, they broadcast a new show. During the 30 minute show, they broadcast the dog picture and its solution. The audience was estimated to be 200,000 people. After the broadcast, it could be assumed that the number of people who knew the solution to the dog picture now totaled over 200,000. Another two days had passed. They gathered a number of research into subjects from areas where British TV and radio did not exist. This time, they were only able to find a sample of roughly 850 people. Naturally, none of them were people who had participated in the first test. They were, however, given the same test and the same two pictures. The results were shocking. 10% of the people saw the lady in the picture. The previous test had yielded a 9.2% success rate. The change was not statistically significant. The dog picture, however, produced a very different result. The percentage of people able to successfully find a dog grew from 3.9% to 6.8%, a very significant increase. So, do you understand? Do you realize the significance of this experiment? There was no way the second group could have seen the picture. They lived far away from Britain, and couldn't have seen the picture. But even so, it was only the success rate for the dog picture that went up. Why? How did that happen? What does it mean? Lotus looked back and forth from Junpei to Santa and back again. Normally, calm and collected, she looked now as though she were very nearly possessed, and there was something manic about her manner. Santa took an involuntary step backward. Junpei didn't budge and stared straight back into Lotus's eyes. 
Does this have something to do with that field or whatever it was that you were talking about earlier? A field not visible to the eye? So if more people know the answer, then that information will pass through the field. Psych! Her, man her manner suddenly shifted. Lotus smiled broadly at Junpei and Santa. She waved her hand dismissively, doing her best to laugh the whole confrontation off. Oh, I was just kidding. You really shouldn't take me seriously. Well, I mean, the things I just told you about are true. They really did happen. But the results of that experiment really aren't anything to go by. They could have easily falsified them. In the end, I'm sure they were just in it for the ratings. They are a TV station, after all. At last, it seemed that Santa had gained control of his composure. <laughs> right! Man, I gotta admit you had me there for a minute. I, uh, really thought you were serious. <laughs> of course not. Like I told you before, I'm sure it's all just pseudoscience. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Santa and Lotus laughed and gave one another jovial claps on the shoulders. Junpei, however, didn't feel so much like laughing. Something felt wrong, unclear. All right, enough nonsense. We've got the key, let's get out of here. Word. Lotus and Santa walked away from the picture, but Junpei stayed, staring at the picture of the dog. A field not visible to the naked eye. Morphogenetic field. The more he thought about it, the more his head hurt. Alrighty, anyways, after all that mumbo jumbo talk, let's head outside and actually go through the door. Alright, let's go to the hallway. I'll go get June. You guys go ahead to the door. Okay. Roger that. Yes! It unlocked! Good job, Junpei. Good, now we can get going. Come on, what are you guys standing around for? Let's get out of here. That we shall. Come on, Jumpy, let's go! Alright, let's go! Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and continue on past the Mars door and see what else there is, see what rooms we can find, and what other weird stuff we can learn about. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!